Hey everybody, today we're gonna do another video about the board game business. And I'm Jeff. I'm Joey. Is this about the board game business or is this well, about failure? It's 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 a it's a, that's the old saying, if you wanna make a small fortune in gaming, you start with a large fortune. Aww. Crushing your dreams. This is really about the feeling that you get when the idea you had, the stuff you worked on that everybody loved and everybody helped you with and you worked so hard to make it happen and it just doesn't work. I can tell you from a uh, vast past experience, uh, starting with my, my first game company, Gamesmiths, in the 90s when I came out with Total War and Pantheon, I was so excited about them at War Games and they were really fun, people enjoyed them and I, I got a total of one review and the reviewer didn't bother playing the game. He just looked at the cover art and said it doesn't look like the kind of game that would do very well. And and he was right. It didn't do very well. Those games, Pantheon and Total War, I made it in a big box because I wanted the box to really be imposing on the shelf like you can see the games behind me on the shelf. And the problem is I had a board, I had some counters, and I had some dice, and there really wasn't a lot in the box. So. When my dad, I showed it to him, I said, hey dad, look at my new game. And he picked up, oh, air ball, looks like there's nothing in here. And I said, no, that's actually the game. You're gonna lift up the carton and it's too light. Ah! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> too light. I would sell maybe two or 300 bucks worth at the local LA conventions. And I said, man, Gen Con, there's gonna be 100,000 people Yeah, 50 there. times as many people, so I'm yeah. going to sell 50 times 50 as much. 50 times as much. But there were also 50 times as many just, uh, uh, dealers there. Yep. So yep. I still sold my two or 300 bucks worth and had a long, well, the, sad okay. drive The good home. news is the booth only cost two grand. Yeah. Well, this was in 92, so I think the booth was only 500 bucks at that time. Then I doubled down. I got new cover art, and I added more pieces to the game. So then I re-released it, and... It still flopped. Oh, God. People don't understand that true courage is not to go out there with the best thing and crush everybody with it. That it doesn't take courage to be awesome and continue to be awesome. What takes real courage is to go out there with whatever you have, even you're not getting a lot of success, and still going forward with it. So that's why, you know. Uh, but it is hard. It is hard to have your dreams crushed. And I would like to say that that's the last time that's ever happened, but then I had uh, Throwing Stones, which was uh, the first ever collectible dice role-playing game. Somebody ordered 10 times as much as they wanted because they thought it was going to get allocated, which bought out my entire inventory. So I re-upped my order from the, from the uh, manufacturer, and then when they got 10 times as much, they said, what's this? We got way too much. And I said, it's everything you ordered. They said, we thought we were going to get 10%. So then they shipped it all back to me. Yeah, so that it's I called had... suing them, Jeff. Yes. Well, a anyway, uh, the bottom line is I ended up with a lot of debt and went bankrupt and went off to never make games again. Yeah, but the best part of the story is 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 the part where someone rolls the dice for throwing stones, and because of the paint used on the dice, all the all the ink comes off on the hands. And there's nothing left on the dice. Not all the ink. That there's silver, red, and gold faces, and the metal flake for uh, the silver and the gold. If you shake them a lot and rub them a lot, it'll come off. The red stayed on forever. We got the games. We're excited. We're demoing them. We're showing them off. People are excited. I'm swapping them with Richard Garfield for Magic decks, and it was just, it was, just, this is great. This, I, it's great. And then by the end of the convention, I'm noticing, man, some of these dice are showing some wear. So eventually, I started uh, spraying them with the uh, fixant to keep them on, and that was fine. But being a small company and Dragon Dice came out at that time and not really getting the traction, it, sometimes it feels like small game companies just don't exist. So when I do something, nobody notices. And that is really crushing of the soul. Whatever happened to um, the guy, Richard Garfield? Do you want to ask him about his thoughts on this topic or I, I think he is one of the least qualified people I can think of to talk about having your dreams crushed because uh, he's he, you know hold on you you beat you beat him because you had Robo Tanks come out before Robo Rally Robo came Tanks out. beat Robo Rally to, to market. market so yeah. so so you crushed his dreams in that right I, yeah I, he's, and you know what's funny is I'm certain that he's had he's had failures too uh, 
it's just that we don't get to hear about him because his successes is what attracts attention to people. If I had more attention to my failures, I probably would have had fewer failures because people would have said, oh, that looks interesting. I'll get that. There's probably one person out there right now going, collectible dice uh, role-playing game? That sounds interesting. Where do I get that? I have one copy here. Well. It, d d can you play it with just one copy? Uh, yes, you can. Oh. And my most recent... Uh, Failure? Yeah. <laughs> You go, is this really the best topic? Yeah, I, you gonna let me talk at all here? Yeah, my most recent soul crushing was when I did this game, Palaces, which uh, is a very Euro game and it's very slick. It's not Joey's kind of game, so he can't. He's not really qualified. See, it's so much not his game. He's walking away. No, I w I oh, have okay, my wonderful, beautiful yes. copy right here. So. I thought this was going to be the thing that puts me on the map in the in the uh, in the Euro style game. It's got it's got deck building. It's got pieces that you build a tower. It's heavy. It's it's a great game, and uh, it just didn't sell well. Well, that's not the same thing as failure, Jeff. Like it's not really a self esteem thing. It's more of like like a self confidence. Is that the same thing as self esteem? It could be. I don't know. I don't feel qualified to talk about self esteem. <laughs> I, what, what's so, the, Joey, what's can the you, point here of this video? Can you tell us? Can you tell us about some uh, failures that you may have had that made you feel like your dream was crushed? Sure. Um, it, Chaosmos was difficult for me because I didn't communicate very well with the team in advance about what our goals were. So everyone sort of ex had different expectations. Some people thought they were going to get a bunch of money. Some people thought that you know they're going to have a big successful new new career, um, and. It came out and it, it was fine. I think it made a profit, and it, it more than that, it got like a little bit of a kind of cult buzz, which has been really wonderful for me. But if it's not like doing really well that I can have a whole company and hire everybody, of course they're going to start to drop out of my life or you know right. go into other things and do their own things. So it's like it, I didn't realize how many of my friendships were dependent on this sort of vague imaginary fantasy that we were all going to succeed in some very tangible way, you know, it, it is what it is. And yeah. so that, that I would qual qualify that as a failure overall. I, I, I love that your failures are, are uh, six digit uh, successes. That, that's, that's not fair. <laughs> No, uh, but actually, I do want to comment about uh, when we did uh, Battle Station Second Edition. That was a big chunk of change, and I really thought that's going to change everything for me. That now you don't need me helping you with marketing. No, I still needed that, obviously. But but I thought now my company is going to be not huge, but big enough that people will say, "Oh, what are they doing?" Battle Station Second Edition has everything I personally want in a game. Hard decisions, tension, immersion, player interaction, a sense of accomplishment, and most of all, fun. And and when I did stuff like Palaces or the re-release of Who Would Win or, or whatever, that I would like it if I came out with something new. If it's not for you, then move past it. But I feel like I don't even make it onto the radar screen. Yeah, That's it, the frustrating part. It might be as simple, honestly, as you are uncomfortable bragging about yourself and sending an email blast every month. Dirt side is out, guys. Dirt side. Dirt side is out. Yeah. You know, first hundred people to respond, get a blah, blah, blah. Like, I understand that, but that's more, that's not really a failure of the game. Like, the game is still fun. I, I think failure is like, there's a lot of, failure is yeah. a strong oh, word. Oh, yeah, it's a strong it, word. It could mean a lot of different things. And, I, I, you know, every failure is a success in that, it's sort of a tried and true yeah, I, thing, but you, you learn from your mistakes. I have, I have, I have learned a lot. That's for sure. It's okay to love yourself and be proud of yourself and ask people for help and clarify your intentions before you begin and not let yourself be disappointed if if you succeed in one way but not the way you were expecting. It's still a success. Yes, and if your game is a failure by whatever standard that is, that doesn't make you a failure. It makes you somebody who made something who didn't happen to make the right thing for the right moment at the right time. If you'd have come out with D&D 50 years ago, it might have not been ripe yet, but 45 years ago was the right number, if that's when it came out. But but anyway, or... 50 years. 
1974. Wow, 50 years 50 ago. 50 years. So you, maybe. Your brother better dig up that old interview with Gary yeah. Gygax. Yeah. I wonder how he's doing. Uh, Gary Gygax is long dead. Your brother. Oh, he's alive. Thanks, guys. All right, thanks for watching. <laughs>